Hi there, and welcome to this virtual information session on the Doctor of Physical Therapy program here at Boston University. My name is Christopher Krauss, and I'm the Director of Graduate Enrollment here at Sargent College. With me today is Diane Heislein, who is the Clinical Associate Professor and Program Director of the DPT program. And Diane will be helping to lead today's discussion in just a few minutes. Before we get started, I just wanted to, to tell you a little bit more about some of the content that we'll be covering today. So we'll start by telling you a little bit more broadly about Boston University as well as Sargent College specifically. And then Diane will take us into a more detailed look at the DPT program covering the curriculum, clinical opportunities, and some of the student outcomes that we have associated with this program. We will then end the presentation by talking a little bit more about the admissions process as well as scholarship opportunities that are available to students. So a little bit more about BU. We are a large uh, private institution consisting of 17 colleges and schools. Most recently, we were ranked uh, 42 in the country by US News and World Report. And I think this says a little bit about our name recognition, both within the US, but also globally, and what that can really do for your career after you graduate. Being a part of BU, uh, you'll have the opportunity to um, utilize many of the amenities that are associated with a large uh, university, including libraries, student services, and athletic facilities. We're also in a, an ideal location right in the heart of Boston, with close proximity to many hospitals and medical centers. So within Sargent College, um, we have four different departments and those include health sciences, occupational therapy, speech language and hearing sciences, and of course, physical therapy and athletic training, which is where the DPT program is situated. At BU, uh, research is a big part of, of what we do. And just within Sargent alone, we have 35 different research labs and edu uh, clinical education centers, which provide a lot of opportunities for students to uh, get involved. We're also uh, quite uh, funded uh, quite well. Um, and in the last year, we had over $18 million in, in grant funding. One of the strengths of Sargent is our focus on interprofessional education. And uh, all of our efforts in this area are um, spearheaded by Craig Slater, who is the director of IPE here at Sargent College. As a student within the DPT program, uh, you'll have an opportunity to participate in our IPE curriculum, which spans the first two years of the program. Within that curriculum, you'll be placed on teams with students in other professions within Sargent, including uh, speech, occupational therapy, and nutrition. You'll also have an opportunity to participate in various modules, uh, some of which are online, and get involved in a number of different IP activities, including uh, simulations and case studies, which are really designed to um, train future interprofessional leaders. So with that being said, I am now going to turn the floor over to Diane. Thanks, Chris. So uh, welcome, I'm glad you are here to hear more about the Doctor of Physical Therapy program. Our highly ranked DPT program has a long history of delivering quality PT education over the past 70 years. And we continue to evolve our, our curriculum and our program to stay current and to really prepare you for contemporary practice. While our class size is on the larger size for some DPT programs, we value the low uh, ratio of students to faculty in our lab um, situations where you're learning a lot of your hands-on skills. And so to do that, we bring in um, outside clinicians who are um, experts in their areas of practice to assist the faculty in um, doing these lab trainings with you so that you are um, able to master all the clinical examination and intervention skills that you will need. In addition, you can see a picture here of our state-of-the-art teaching lab. It features high-end equipment. We have an advanced audiovisual system that provides excellent visual visualization of all the clinical demonstrations that we're doing in the lab with you. 
Um, it provides the ability for us to record student um, performances so that you can do self-evaluations and reflective learning. And it, we also can move this space around to meet whatever the learning objectives are of the course. So oftentimes it's set up like you might see in outpatient clinical practice. We have the ability to create our own little um, hospital room within this space with a hospital bed and all the equipment we would expect to see within a hospital setting. So it provides a lot of real um, experience in what you would be getting when you get out into the clinical setting. When we look at our curriculum, it is a three-year full-time program, which does include summer learning. Um, you can see that we start our program in May, where students will complete three foundational courses, uh, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And our clinical education is another major, major component of the DPT education. We actually exceed the minimum standards that are required by the accrediting board to ensure that our students feel well prepared to practice upon graduation. Students will begin these integrated clinical experiences in the first year of the program. And in these experiences, your, the emphasis is really on your communication skills and professional development. And then during the summer between your first and second year, you'll complete a, a six to eight week full time experience, so 40 hours a week, where you'll have the opportunity to practice skills that you've acquired in your education in the first year under the guidance of a clinical instructor. During the following summer, students will complete a 12 weeks of full-time clinical education experience. And these are in a variety of practice settings. Um, and then you also will have two additional final clinical experience or your final additional clinical experience will encompass 22 weeks of full-time practice in the spring of the third year. Oftentimes students will break that into two 11 week experiences or they may do a longer experience in a, a particular type of setting. We do have clinical sites all across the country and we partner with many exceptional medical facilities. There are some options for students to engage in specialty practice in settings like pediatrics, high level athletes, oncology rehab, uh, women's health, just to give you some examples. Um, and students will work early on with the faculty to plan out their potential interests if they know what they want to do. And for many students, they don't know quite what practice setting they want to work in. And we give you a breadth across your experiences so that you have familiarity with different practice settings before graduation. Um, do bear in mind, because we do send our students across the country, there are additional um, travel and housing uh, considerations with clinical education that you should be thinking about as well. Um, but our students do value the ability to be in premier sites around the country. So as I mentioned, um, you'll start the program in the summer um, of that first year, and we complete three foundational courses in anatomy, functional anatomy, and physical therapy examination that you're gonna build upon in the subsequent semesters. The curriculum overall is organized by physiological systems. So the cardiovascular and pulmonary system, the musculoskeletal system, the neurological system, and then we overlay aspects of practice, including the entire age spectrum from pediatrics to geriatrics, we also layer in health promotion and wellness, evidence-based practice throughout the curriculum, even though um, we don't have, um, you know, we might have a course called evidence-based practice. It doesn't mean that's the only place where that appears in the curriculum. It really is interlaced throughout all of the courses throughout the curriculum. We also do introduce you to educational theory early in the curriculum because patient education is such a critical component of clinical practice. And we feel that it's really important that you start building these skills in how to teach and how to address learning, uh, learning differences in your patients early on. In the second year, you're going to continue with additional coursework in the musculoskeletal system. You'll also be taking coursework in the neurological systems, and then you're going to gain more exposure to population health in our health promotion and wellness course. You'll have a course in diagnostic imaging, and we do um, reflective work on your clinical education experiences in our seminar-based courses. And then that last year of the curriculum, again, you're gonna complete another clinical education experience, that 12-week experience in the summer, and you'll come back in the fall semester for your last um, didactic semester of coursework. In this fall semester, students do complete 
to what we call our capstone projects, our capstone courses in the semester. Um, one is comprehensive clinical reasoning. This is a problem-based learning course where students work in small groups under the guidance of a, of a course facilitator to solve complex clinical, clinically-based cases that are very realistic and really pulled from clinical practice um, from our faculty and our um, lab instructors that, that are in clinical practice. This course embraces all elements of the curriculum and it really helps solidify students' ability to integrate the material across the entire curriculum in preparation for clinical practice. The other capstone course that our students are involved in is academic practicum. And this actually started in the previous um, spring semester and carries over in the fall semester because it's a two semester course. This course allows students to sort of dive deep into an area of interest or topic that they have a particular interest in and um, develop a tangible product at the end. So students can select um, topics from a very wide range of, of um, interests that they may have. Um, they often will do their practicums in service-based learning activities. Some will choose to work under the, guide, under the guidance of one of our research faculty and contribute to a research project. Other students may select to do an educationally-based um, project that can range from group sessions with clients who have a particular diagnosis. Some of our students are actually presenting um, new knowledge to practicing physical therapists. And we've had a number of our students present at national conferences the work that they've done in their practicum project. And these are just a few of the examples of what you can do within this course. Um, a lot of our students really look forward to this ability to really custom develop a course um, content around what they're interested in. And we're very proud of the work our students do within this course. And I believe one of the major strengths of our program is our faculty. All of our clinical faculty hold clinical doctorate degrees. Almost all of them are board certified clinical specialists, including cardiovascular and pulmonary clinical specialists. We have musculoskeletal clinical specialists, neurologic clinical specialists, and geriatric clinical specialists. Most of our clinical faculty also are currently still practicing in addition to their full-time faculty position so that they can really stay current with clinical practice and bring that richness of the clinical experience into the classroom. We also have very highly trained research faculty who are physical therapists who are working on cutting edge research to solve clinically based problems, like how can exercise slow the progression of Parkinson's disease? Or how can we best restore the ability to walk in people who have suffered a stroke? Or what biomechanical issues contribute to patients who develop hip pain early in life? Or how can we best treat osteoarthritis of the knee? So we have a strong focus on movement systems in all of our um, courses as well as our research efforts because physical therapists really are the movement experts. And while I could spotlight probably all of our faculty, I just wanted to give you a snapshot of a few of our faculty to give you a sense of who's going to be teaching you in the DPT program. Professor Ellis has committed her career to improving the life of patients with Parkinson's disease. Her model and it truly is a national model, the Center for Neurological Rehab embraces research, clinical practice, and education to really meet this goal of enhancing the life of patients who have Parkinson's disease. Professor Kumar has an awesome research lab. He is um, examining um, cartilage changes that occur with osteoarthritis, and he has a number of clinical trials that are associated with interventions to improve movement and function in patients who have knee osteoarthritis. And Professor Marenko, who's one of the faculty members who teaches early in the curriculum, works closely with the BU Physical Therapy Center and utilizes real-time patient data to inform clinical practice and drives advances in practice based on this type of research. So we're taking what we do with patients and using that data to help drive the research around the best ways to treat patients and then actively modifying clinical care based on those findings. As I've already mentioned, we have a number of research centers and clinical sites that are part of our department that provide a common theme across um, movement and our interest in movement, um, but also provide many opportunities for students to get involved if they have an interest in digging deeper into what does it take to become a researcher or how does research really apply to clinical practice. 
So we have many opportunities for our students to get involved with research if they're interested in that. It's not a requirement. Um, but oftentimes we're bringing the results of these research labs directly again into the classroom setting to bring you current very contemporary practice issues. And I've also made mention to our on-site outpatient-based physical therapy practice, the Boston University Physical Therapy Center, which is um, on the west end of our campus. This state-of-the-art practice provides clinical care to the BU community and also to the, the community of Boston. So we treat many patients within the city as well. The clinicians who practice at this center, almost all of them have advanced training and certifications, and many of them serve as our lab instructors or in clinical courses, which is nice because they see you in the clinical courses, and then if you're doing any clinical training down in the center, they're there to help carry that, that bridge between the clinical classroom to the clinical practice setting. It's one of our major sites for clinical education of integrated, those clinical, integrated clinical education experiences. And also we do um, place a number of our students here for their full-time experiences as well. And our student outcomes, which you can see here, are very strong. Students all pass um, the uh, national board exam. All of our students have been able to find employment. Um, and so again, I hear from, in, employers all the time that they really value the skill set that our graduates have and really want and seek out BU graduates when they're looking to hire new PTs. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you, Diane. Um, we're now going to turn our attention over to the application process as well as um, talk a little bit more about the financial aid process. So the first, first thing to know about um, submitting your application is that all applications should go through uh, PTCAS, which is a centralized application service. Um, our application deadline is November 15th. And you can see here on the slide all of our application requirements. Um, so we, of course, require official transcripts. Um, we do have a minimum undergraduate GPA of a 3.0. Uh, there are several essays to be aware of. So there's a personal statement prompt that's associated with your PTCAS application. And within the PTCAS application, you'll see that there are several BU-specific short answer essays. Um, so we do require three additional short answer essays in addition to the, the personal statement. Uh, we are looking for three letters of recommendation. Uh, one of which should be from an academic source, such as a professor. We require 30 observation hours, and we do have a number of prerequisites that you should be aware of. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about what those are, I would encourage you to just visit our How to Apply page on our website. Um, it's important to know that those can be in progress at the time that you're applying, but they do have to be completed prior to matriculating into the program. And finally, with regard to uh, standardized tests, if you are an international student whose uh, first uh, language is not English, we do require the TOEFL exam. This uh, can be waived, however, if you attended a school where the primary level of instruction was English. So if you have questions about that, you can definitely reach out. And we can get those, those answered. And finally, a relatively new development is that we no longer require the GRE exam. These will uh, not be factored into our um, admissions review process, so we, we don't encourage you to send us your scores. With regard to funding, there's a few different um, sources of funding that we want to make you aware of. The first is our merit scholarships, and everyone who applies to the program is automatically considered for a merit scholarship. And this is really based on a holistic review of your application. So there's no, no additional application or forms that you need to fill out in order to be considered for our merit scholarships. And if you receive one, um, that would be located right within your admission letter. Um, another source of funding that um, is available are, is simply our, our student employment opportunities. So there are teaching and graduate assistantships that are available. These typically become available um, after the admissions process. 
Um, so typically not included with your admission letter, but there are several opportunities available in that area. Um, there's also uh, larger um, student employment opportunities across the university. If you're looking for a part-time job, um, many opportunities in that area as well. There is a student employment uh, office website that you can check out if you'd like to explore some of those, those opportunities. And then finally, uh, many of our students do supplement um, their educational expenses with loans. So it's important to know that. Um, if you are a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, permanent resident, sorry, um, you are likely eligible for um, several U.S. federal loans. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what those loan options are, uh, we encourage you to reach out to Janet Turner, who is our Assistant Director of Graduate Financial Aid, and her email there is on the screen if you'd like to, to chat with her further. So that concludes uh, all of the information that we wanted to uh, share with you today. We know that you uh, likely have more questions, so we encourage you to reach out. You can contact us at sargrad at bu.edu. Um, and we just wanted to, to thank you for tuning in and we hope to connect with you soon. Thank you for listening and we do look forward to hearing from you. Take care, bye-bye.